H3 Conversations is brought to you by Major League Mindset, results on and off the field, and by Jeff Burton Consulting, charting your path to a successful outcome, and by Crozet Sports, family, community, and sports. Um, we've got some people joining us tonight, so uh, welcome, everybody. This is episode four of H3 Conversations. This is one I've been looking forward to for a long time for a number of reasons. I've gotten to know Brandon Geyer over the years. Um, he played at UVA. When I first moved back to Charlottesville and then had a seven-year career in Major League Baseball, and I had just started hearing whispers about a year ago about some of the incredible work that he was doing in helping young athletes reach peak performance. And so we've had a couple of conversations since, and lo and behold, a couple of the kids that I have been helping myself in the recruiting process found BG without my help. So I thought, well, this, well, how are we going to do this? We're going to pull all these guys together. We're going to have a little conversation about what it means to go from wherever you are to a better version of yourself. So as usual, tonight I have a co-host, Greg Angley. Greg, uh, introduce yourself real quickly for the new listeners out there. Hey everyone, I'm Greg uh, Angley. I, I run a school, but I, I met Jeff through the, the wild world of baseball recruiting and uh, and through my son, who's a freshman at Rhodes College and playing baseball. And uh, he, he was a big part of, of helping us uh, in that process. And I'm someone who is a former athletic director and just a super passionate uh, individual with sports and been fortunate enough to uh, have an opportunity now to be part of interviewing some really cool people. And tonight I am so excited to uh, be part of this. This is going to be really, really fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here again. You're a great interviewer and I, it's nice to have a, a pilot so that I can just be the co-pilot in this whole thing. Right. So, um, so Brandon, we want you, uh, gave you a little bit of a promo there. I'd love for you to just give kind of the 60 second commercial about what's going on in your life today. Kind of maybe, may, maybe talk just a bit about um, your playing career, and, and and then kind of what you put together here with major league major league mindset. Yeah. So first off, Jeff, thanks for having me on here. Um, and to have Bryce and, and JD, um, two of the most, um, you know, guys who come through the program, at least tied with my favorite, um, guys who just like embody everything that, that major league mindset's all about. Um, so this is honor, um, pleasure to be here. Um, so yeah, uh, trying to think how I can keep this short. So basically, uh, went to university of Virginia, um, then played in the big leagues for close to a decade. And then I retired in 2020. Um, and it was, it was what happened my, uh, junior year, um, that, that got re got me into the mental side of the game, more specifically this book right here, heads up baseball. Number one, uh, my first three years at Herndon high school in Northern Virginia, uh, below average player. Um, so towards the end of that junior year, talked to a coach, he recommended this book. Um, you know, I was struggling, no col college, college is talking to me. And, um, ever since then, um, when I came out for that junior summer and senior um, year, I was a completely new player, but a completely new person. And it just changed the trajectory of my life. And so that moment on just continued to get after it, get after it, get after it. Um, so when I retired in 2020 and started Major League Mindset, um, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I want to give back. I wanted to, you know, I was blessed with this platform. Um, and so I built a system and a company called Major League Mindset to really help the next generation of athletes um, just, just dominate the mental side of the game of baseball and life. Um, and I, I could keep going on and on, but that's like a quick snapshot of, of what I'm doing now. And we'll probably get into more, uh, more of the details here tonight. We'll get into the weeds and let me, let me tell you a couple of things that I can relate to being a below average player in my third year of high school. I can a hundred percent relate to that, right? Um, I cannot relate to your good hair and that great tattoo. And there's gotta be a story behind that too. I want to hear that story at some point in time. I also want to introduce a couple of guys that you just referenced that have been all stars in my life in the last year too. And these two guys can't really relate to being average players either in high school. Both of these guys are absolute rock stars in the world of uh, high school baseball, moving on eventually to bigger and better things. But first off, let me, uh, let me introduce JD Wolf. And um, so I met JD about, it's only been like eight months. It seems like it's been a lot longer than that. But I don't know that I have ever met a more disciplined, more articulate young man than J.D. Wolf. And so 
JD, I, I love you, man. And I am so excited to just hear you tell a little bit about your story. So just give these guys a brief update on where you are and what you're doing with your life right now. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm really excited to be on. Um, I love BG. Um, we go way back, known him since I was seven. Uh, but for me, baseball has been a lot of my life. It feels like what I was born to do. So that's what I've done since I was seven years old. I've chased that dream. Um, have gone to the DR for that dream. Have met tons of professional baseball players that have helped me become who I am today. Uh, guys like Brandon, Joel Peralta, their discipline. I learned it from the best that it really takes um, everything and more to reach the best version of yourself and play at those higher levels. So at about 15, I moved from Pennsylvania down to Florida um, to play baseball at IMG Academy. Going into my fourth year there, I'm a senior. And this previous summer, I committed on July 4th to play baseball for Coach Kaz at the United States Air Force Academy. And um, I'm extremely blessed for that opportunity. I'm excited. And I always asked God to use baseball to help me find my next dream. And, well, this might be the start of that. So I can go out there play for an awesome coach, awesome competition, and then find what I want to do next, potentially. So just it's a great opportunity. I'm really excited for it. All right. I'm fired up for you. All right. Congrats. So, yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> awesome, man. And thank you in advance. Appreciate the yeah. service. Mm, yeah, it's awesome. You. So it must have been about a year ago, I get a, a video from a mutual friend in Richmond, and he shows me the uh, video of this young ninth grade kid who's windmill jamming a basketball at about five nine and 170 pounds and I realize gosh that guy's kind of unique right that's what it's supposed to look like right there right and then I met the guy and he's good looking and he's articulate he's got a little swagger about him um Bryce Neely man I'm fired up to have you here too man uh, exciting times in your life. I know you're going through a little bit right now, but I just love you to kind of introduce yourself to the folks too. Yeah. So, uh, once again, thanks for having us, Jeff. This is awesome. Um, yeah, I'm Bryce. Uh, I've been a multi-sport athlete my entire life played, you know, football, baseball, basketball, surf, snowboard, all that stuff. And, uh, kind of just had fun playing sports and it's, you know, it's just kind of my getaway from life and, something I, I really love. And it wasn't really until I met with Jeff sometime, you know, last year or something like that, where it kind of clicked that it could be the uh, next stage of my life as well. So, uh, you know, ever since then, been putting in the work, obviously got in touch with Brandon and he was the one who really, uh, you know, just practicing the mental side of the game. I found a way to kind of push it to the next level. And over the summer I committed to UVA and, um, you know, which is a dream school for me. So, Super pumped up about that. And uh, recently, I've been sidelined because of an ACL injury. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm excited to see where that takes me. And yeah, that's where I'm at. It's awesome. Hey, I just have to share this only because it's timely. Okay. So I just get a text from Coach Mack, right? I don't know if he's listening live. Oh he knew that I was, yeah, I know. Yeah, oh boy. This isn't about you, about you. He said BG was totally full throttle every day. He was all about the team every day. I don't know. That seems to me when you've got a coach as well-respected as Coach Mack in this industry, BG, I, I remember sitting in Coach Mack's office maybe two or three years ago and saying, you've been doing this a long time, Mack. Tell me the guy who most embodies what you want out of an athlete here at UVA and you were the guy he came up with. I didn't know that you were doing this work at that point in time. Maybe you were just kind of getting started. But when I think about what I'm trying to help young people do, right, which is reach the next level. And I think about how little separation there is between most kids, right? You can go out on a field and you can look at a bunch of guys that are between 5'10 and 6'1 and between 170 pounds and 190 pounds, and they can all play a little bit. But there's a few unique things that are separators in this world. And I would imagine, BG, you're the only one on this in this uh, panel that's um, played at the major league level. But I would imagine, with a few exceptions, maybe Shohei Otani, right? The, the talent level between number one on a major league roster and number 25 on a major league roster isn't that big. 
but there are some separators. And I think if we can tap some of the young people into those separators, they have a chance to do just that with their competition. I'd just be interested in knowing from you what you see at the various levels that set the superior athletes apart from those who are good enough to be there, but maybe not strong, strong minded enough to kind of excel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great question. And, um, the fact that Max said that, I mean, goosebumps, um, I mean, I just tried to, uh, embody what I feel like, um, someone is, who is, is striving to be the best version of himself, who is not perfect, um, but is doing it in service to something bigger than, than themselves. Um, so the fact that he said that, um, that's, that's, I love that. Um, so that's great. Um, as far as your question, I think it comes down to big leaguers are big leaguers because they're the best at failing. Um, you know, I'll get into a little bit more, but I think that obviously they don't want to fail. But in this game, we're going to fail. And big leaguers are the best at failing. There's talented guys, even more talented guys in the minors who don't get to the big leagues or get there and don't last nearly as long. Why? Because they can't handle the adversity or they don't have like JD talked about. And I think Bryce, do they don't have the discipline? I think you got to out discipline the competition, no matter what you're doing. And that goes with how you handle failure, how often you approach adversity and step out of that comfort zone, you know, because a lot of players have that fear of failure and this fixed mindset. They don't want to look bad. And they're so worried about what other people think about them and, you know, this failing and all that. So the thing is, they never really train it and work at it and become, you know, this have this warrior mindset and with this winner learn mindset that where they just turn everything into fuel. And, and really, I think it all comes down to Jeff is is they accept that it's not supposed to be easy. They 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 accept that there's going to be ups and downs on the field and off the field. And when someone can truly not just say it, but they can truly accept it and they can get to a point where Byron Katie, great author and psychologist, I actually have her quote right here, where you can love what is, no matter what happens, no arguing with reality, you love what is. It is one of the most liberating things we can ever have on and off the field. So um, that's a big separator. But stop me if you want me to you know, go in different directions. But Something I always like whenever I'm going to speak with athletes or teams or organizations, I always bring up a story of two different ball players because it goes right in hand with whatever what you're talking about, your question. So let's just say player one and player two. Player one, crazy natural talent, God given ability, but very weak mindset. Fear more than anything holds him back, especially that fear of failure and what other people think. So he avoids adversity and he avoids stepping out of his comfort zone as often as he can. He focuses all of his energy on what's out of his control. When things don't go his way, he acts like a victim, finds excuses, bad body language, blames others, complains a lot. He has this perfectionist um, mindset where you know, he, he has these high standards and never thinks he should fall short. So he shames himself. And what happens with that? self-image goes down the tube and it's very hard to outperform a, a poor self-image. And lastly, he doesn't have the work ethic or discipline needed to be great. So that's player one. That's a lot at, at every level, youth, high school, college, big leagues. We, we see guys like that who are just freaks. And eventually when that talent gap shrinks and the game speeds up, they can't get away with it any longer, just getting by on their physical skills. So that's player one. Player two, pretty good natural talent, but nowhere near player one. This is what I would think is, is many of the players. Um, the, I would say the majority of the players player two skill, but he learned about that six tool, that mindset, what I like to call a major league mindset. So mm -hmm. fear went from a true, true obstacle. And, and trust me, fear used to hold me back more than anything in, in, in many players. So it went from an obstacle to an asset that now fueled him and fueled his performance. And he stepped out of that comfort zone, knowing it's it's the true ramp to his infinite and, and really unknowable potential inside of him and inside of everybody else. He focused all of his energy on what was 100% in his control and let go of everything else. When things didn't go his way, he found a way. He was a warrior. He didn't find excuses. He found a way, basically asking, what's the best way to respond right now to get what I want? And then he didn't, he had very high standards, but he wasn't a perfectionist. He's what they call an optimalist. He knows he's going to fall short. So when he does, he doesn't bash himself. 
He wants to preserve and continue to build up that self-image. So he simply learns from it, learns and uses it as fuel. And lastly, has the work ethic needed to be great and the discipline to simply do what he needs to do, do what he knows is best for him, whether he feels like it or not. He puts his actions before his feelings. And so whenever I, I, I say a similar story to you know players and parents, I say, which player do you honestly believe? had more fun, had more confidence and, and had a more rewarding and successful um, career, both on and off the field. And obviously everyone always raises their hand player too. Um, so that's a long way for me to answer your question right there of, man, I've seen player one at every level. Um, and it's unfortunate. And, and the main reason is that's holding them back is their mindset more than anything. Yeah. Oh man, I got so many questions for you. So many. Yeah. Uh, some fun stuff and like, uh, but if you don't mind for one sec, I wanted to ask if JD and Bryce, uh, as someone who runs a school, if you both tell me where you guys are going to school right now, because I think when you uh, when you introduce yourselves in the manner that you fellows do, some somebody obviously your parents, huge, huge, and the biggest influences, um, or some of them, I'm sure, but I'd love to know where you go to school because they deserve a shout out because uh, that was that was a, a wonderful. Uh, introduction from both of you so Bryce I know where you go but go ahead and let, let, let everyone else know uh, I go to St. Christopher's it's a private school in Richmond love it there and uh awesome and uh JD where do you go bud I go to IMG Academy in uh Bradenton Sorry. Florida that's awesome you said that I forgot that um my dad's actually on the call too so shout out to him hey what's up, Dwayne? um <laughs> uh Fellas, before we, I kind of like let the three of you guys take it over Brandon I wondered like a couple things if you could maybe think about as we start to talk a little bit about some of this mindset stuff and how you're working on it. One uh, interested, you referenced one, uh, one individual. I'm wondering if, if anybody else um, has influenced you in, in this regard. And, and I think obviously coaches have, but if, if you've, if you've done a bunch of reading uh, or other things that have sort of influenced how you've, how you've done this. And then the bigger one I would love to, for you to think about um and you had referenced your, your aha moments came between your junior and senior year. And, and in many cases these days, it's never too late, but that's, that's a tough time, but that's probably the, that's, and that's, I say an incredible young age, just thinking about the type of work you're trying to do and the world, how much more difficult it is maybe with the world of recruiting and the, and the, and some of the things that are going on with how much earlier it starts now that maybe make this even more impactful work to do but at times difficult i i would guess because of how early you might have to try to start this stuff right um yeah um so i'll start with who who influenced me um yeah you know what um uh, my, my dad was was absolutely huge you know what i what, what stands out with with my dad growing up was he, first he wanted me to play all sports he didn't care what i played second i never never was afraid or dreaded the car ride home what is his question to me did you have fun son yeah and so now that's the very first thing when i'm coaching my son or watching them play after during the game and after are you having fun are you having that's literally all i care about and it was instilled from my dad doing that and i bring that up because i know you know you know parents want the best for their kid but i hear stories from the kids themselves or from parents admitting that they they know they can get better, where that car ride home, it, it can make an 0 for 4 feel like an 0 for 10, you know? Um, so I got to start with my dad. Um, absolutely huge. So grateful for him. Um, you talked, Jeff brought up Coach Mack, Coach Oak. I mean, huge, huge influence instilling. You know, I went to UVA. Um, you know, I feel like I was, I wasn't super mature at that time. Um, I guess like a lot of kids that age, but I had a lot of growing to do, you know, first year, um, quick story. I almost got kicked off the team. Um, I almost got kicked off the team and, and struggled. I went in as a third baseman and, uh, you know, the reality is I trained my mind and changed myself heading into senior year of high school. But then I thought it was like riding a bike. I thought, oh, I trained it. I'm this hot shot recruit. You train your mind once, you're good. Nope. I got to UVA. I the mental side held me back more than anything. I'd be playing third base and Zimmy was playing short. They tried that experiment for a little bit, but man, I couldn't handle it. I'd make an error and I'd get back to my what I was my first three years in high school. 
hope the next ball is not hit to me. You know, just yeah. brutal self-talk, not controlling my emotions, not stopping what I what I got great with that senior year is when that spiral happened. I'm starting to get disconnected from that best version of me. I like to call it the gaps getting wide. No longer the first year at UVA, it's like I forgot everything. Um, so that's when they moved me into the outfield for good. And then at the end of that year, had shoulder surgery, and that's when I recommitted. I recommitted to doing everything in my power to become the absolute best version of me as a person and as a player. No more enjoying, you know, enjoy college, but my discipline went through the roof. I got back into the mental side of the game, still continued and always will continue to get after it on the physical side, because obviously that's important. And our body has a lot more to do with our mind than many people think it goes both ways. So um, Coach Oak, Coach Mack, huge influences. Um, Ken Revisa, who wrote this book, God bless him. He passed away in 2016, um, but he wrote this book. And then the second version, Heads Up Baseball 2.0. Um, but basically, I read that first one in 2000, summer of 2003, heading into senior year. And then eight years later, my rookie year with the Tampa Bay Rays, what do you know? Ken Revisa is the team sports psychologist. So I get Crazy. to meet him in spring training. And I basically first thing, Ken, great to meet you, man. Thank you. You changed the trajectory of my life. So when I saw that, when you talked about aha moment, it was going into senior year. That was the first one. Another one, UVA, when I started to struggle and I realized, oh, training the mind is a never ending game. Just like the physical side, if you stop training it, you're going to atrophy, right? Um, if you stop swinging, you stop hitting, you're going to atrophy. Um, so that was another aha moment. But remember me, me say that to Ken. I wanted when I retired, you know, it was my goal and not necessarily kids to come up to me and say, you changed the trajectory of my life. I wanted to embody a person that would possibly lead to a player, player's life on and off the field changing based on the training we do together. Um, so Ken Revisa, huge influence, um, a guy named Brian Johnson. He runs a company called Heroic. Um you talked about tattoos, Jeff. Him and I both have this Arate tattoo, which we can get into it a little bit later. It's the one word that could summarize my whole philosophy and every single thing I do um, in life. And he is up there. Sean Casey is up there. We are basically, we are three accountability partner buddies. Uh, we trade our aura scores every morning. We oh. hold ourselves accountable to uh, just showing up and putting the work in and doing it you know, to live our best life and help others do the same. And, you know, I forget the saying, it's you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Although I'm not with them in person, I literally, I'm texting with Brian Johnson and Sean Casey every day. And it's just amazing when you surround yourself with like-minded people who have similar goals and passion, who are disciplined and, you know, um, it, it's just amazing what it can do for you. So, I could go on and on with the people that influenced me, but those are the ones that really, really uh, stand out. That's hey, awesome. J JD and Bryce, I want to ask you guys to get involved in this thing. So when was it, you're both fantastic baseball players, mm -hmm. and athletes, but at some point in time, you made the decision to do what your teammates didn't do. And that is to hook up with Brandon and start thinking about training from something other than strength or your baseball skill. What, when was it that you decided training your mind was important and how did the connection with Brandon come about? JD, I know you go back a long time, but somewhere along the way you started working yeah. together. So like I said earlier, um, I met Brandon when I was seven and he always made time for me in the clubhouse and he still makes time for me today. I can call him anytime and he's there for me. And um, that's just awesome to have a guy like that. And he's great. Um, I'll get more into that. Um, about January of my sophomore year, um, I'm going into that spring and I'm getting ready. It's like, okay, this is going to be my year. This is going to be my breakout year. Um, and I go first preseason game. Oh, for four was three strikeouts and two errors. And that's just very uncharacteristic of me. Um, but like Brandon talked about earlier with the spiral, I just spiraled. One bad at bad, I was like, oh, I'm doing it to myself again. And recent, like that same week, I just heard about Brandon's new program. It's like, huh, 
hey, I remember this guy. And connected with him, started working with him one-on-one. I was like, all right, it's time to go all in. And um, again, Brandon talked about being excellent. Um, And again, part of the Air Force Academy's motto is excellence in all that we do. And so I was going to go at this and I was going to take this game, my mental game to a whole new level. So every week I started working with Brandon, getting on calls, buying into all his principles because his major league mindset program is awesome. Cause not only does it give the theory and just the, the knowledge gives practice, gives steps. And so I knew exactly what I needed to do. And right away I saw the results. Now the first game I worked with him, I was one for four, but it was the freest one for four I ever had. It was some line outs, some fly outs. I did the flip the switch routine before the game. I was like, all right, breath work, repeated some good mantras, control what I control. You know, I can do this all day, bring it on, right? Me and Brandon talk about bring it on all the time. Bring on the good, bring on the bad, bring on the failure, success, heartbreak, all of it, bring it on. And so that's when things started to change. Um, And again, it immediately coincided. Spring year ended up being the best year I'd ever had. Was it easy? No, you can just ask Brandon. There was a lot of ups and downs that year. But then that spring carried into that summer, summer into the junior fall, junior fall into junior spring. And then summer, I really had my breakout. I'm just, just, it's again, Brandon talks about Arte, about being that best version of yourself. And I'll let him explain more of that. But again, I just kept trying to level up, level up. When I reached one level, I was just trying to get to the next about being the best version of myself. And over this last um, year and a half working with Brandon, I feel I've ended up in a pretty good spot. So awesome. It's a great story. Bryce, similar question for you. You know, when did you realize this is something that could be additive in your life? Right. So funny enough, kind of like similar upbringing with Brandon. Uh, we kind of, I've kind of known him for a while through uh, kind of mutual familial connections, I guess. And um, going into my sophomore year last year, um, I heard about his class and my my pet, not my pet peeve, I could say my you know, Achilles heel going into that and still is sometimes uh, is just that I'm inconsistent and I play like the best baseball player ever when I'm super confident and going in there knowing I'm the best on the field. But if I have a bad game, and I'm going in feeling pressure, you know, it's I play like I have a lot of pressure on my shoulders. So I'm looking for a way to change it. You know, I realize this isn't something that changes when I'm in the batting cage, no matter how many times I take the same rep, do this drill. So I hop on this class and, you know, I'm starting to see like this is a wise guy telling me wise things. So I start buying in, you know, really doing the, uh, you know, activities in the book and applying it in game, you know, just starting with things like breathing techniques helping me calm down and kind of slowing it down for me and being able to handle, you know, kind of like JD said, having a bad game. Um, and just things like knowing how to control, like just being able to control the controllables and not worry about if an ump makes a, you know, bad borderline call and strikes you out, or, you know, if you just missed the ball, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, and I, I worked on that and through my spring season, you know, it was a lot of ups and downs and then still leading into my, uh, you know, summer season, lots of ups and downs, but, you know, and I, and especially with uh, recruiting coming into play and you have coaches right on the fence watching you play, I, there's still some of those games where I don't think I played my best baseball, but I think because of the mental side and how I practice it, I think the coaches understood I can handle myself on the field. And I think that was one of the things they liked about me is how well I could handle myself. So. They didn't mind your six four speed. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah that helps too. Ball, center no, but you know what's fun, Bryce, is uh, I can tell you having competed, watching teams compete against you as often as as those teams did compete in the past couple of years. I can't tell you one game you had more hits than you didn't, or if you ever left our field or we ever left that field. I just, you know, when you get back and, and you're talking about players that made an impact, it's always you, but I never statistically, and, and that's not disrespectful. It's respectful to how you play the game, right? It's like, I, I, I never knew if you had a good game or bad game uh, by talking to you. You always, sorry, that's an impressive trait. And I remember taking that from the times I saw you play, knowing that I knew indirectly knew who you were in advance. So that's, that's awesome that I've been able to see you embody some of the things that you're talking about already. So well done. Yeah, well done. Yeah. 
Brandon, I would, I'd be interested in knowing, um, I mean, I, I watch your Instagram every single morning and you put out wonderful content for anybody who wants to pay attention. Um, but, but, uh, when you show up for group sessions and I'll see you at UVA or at the university of Maryland recently, I think I saw you, where were you? The university of Houston maybe recently, but I'll also see you at some major league places periodically. How receptive are folks in the collective versus individuals? Meaning, hmm. when you show up at the uh, California or the Anaheim Angels, um, you know, you've got two of the five best players on the planet that are there. How engaged are Mike Trout and Shohei Otani versus those guys who just got to the majors for the very first time and are trying to figure out what the secret sauce is? Amazing question. Um, if let's go right to the angels. So what, what stood out to me, you know, with Shohei, the, um, you know, speaking gap and everything was a little tricky, but his interpreter was always there, but for Mike Trout, you know, what, what stood out without getting into details of, of stuff is, is his humility is someone who, I don't know how many MVPs he's won, but right away, he was like the one who, who would be, who was all into this. I remember, the second road trip I made, I met them in Houston um, against the Houston Astros um, this past year. Um, first time that I that I put in the group chat, hey, today I'm going to run you guys through a um, little breath work, meditation and visualization. If anyone would like to do it, we'll be in this room an hour and a half before the game. And, you know, being with them two months before that, I, I knew that the younger players would be into it because the younger players – um, they're not really set in their ways yet. They're still looking for routines and, and different things in the, at the big league level. So I thought a couple of them would be there. Um, as far as older guys, you know, not as much because um, they've had that success and it's worked for them. So a lot of them were kind of set in their own ways, which is totally cool. Um, and I expected that going in. But who was the first one there? Mike Trout sitting in there. And, you know, when I think of him, I just think of someone who's had obviously so much success, but someone who has this humility, someone who has this relentless drive to continually, continuously get better. That's Mike Trout. And there's a reason, you know, success leaves clues. And there's a reason he's been so successful. Um, I, the, uh, you know, I always like to bring up the All Blacks rugby team. Um, I think all time 84% winning percentage um, New Zealand rugby team. And their mantra or motto was better people make better all blacks. So I like to think better people make better baseball players. I don't think it, I know it. And when I think of Mike Trout, I think of someone who has humility, someone who is just a great person, someone who is a leader, someone who is just, like I said, already at a high level and JD or Bryce already said this, but they're, it's never ending. Our, our potential is infinite and really unknowable. So yeah, you, you, you catch that, you know, next best version, you make your prior best, your new baseline. The game's not over. There, there's a lot more levels. You can continue to level up, level up, level up. And when I think of Mike Trout, that's what he does. Um, so it's a beautiful thing. I love seeing that. Um, but as far as buy-in, you know, a lot more at the college level. So when I go and work with, I just had a, a nice zoom with UVA last night, going back there in a couple of weeks. So I'm in person with them like five, six times every year. Um, and then we supplement with zoom. The college level guys are definitely way more into it and open about it and ask more questions and, you know, are looking for different, you know, techniques or tools that they can use in the moment to really help them gain control so that they can have better control over their performance. Um, so that's been great group sessions with high school. Obviously they are a lot of players though. Don't think they really need it. You know, they don't, they don't think they need it or they don't want to do it when I'm talking about the mental side of the game, or they have this fixed mindset and they, they did just believe that it's set in stone. Their, their mental toughness, their, their confidence, their discipline, their focus, there's nothing they can do. They're just stuck with it. But the truth of the matter is once they realize, and hopefully, you know, it was almost too late for me. I did it senior year. I don't recommend waiting that long. I'm one of the lucky and, and fortunate ones. But once you realize you can train your mind, just like your body, you can develop mental muscle the exact same way you build physical muscle. Cause we all have the gift of growth, the adaptability of our brain and our body, the, the best, just take advantage of that. 
That's what it is. The best take advantage of that gift. LeBron James says the greats master the body, the greatest master the mind. And it's so true because when you do that, you get this key, you get a key, which is your mind that completely unlocks you. So, you know, like I tell all these players, you might already be at a very high level and performing good and think you don't need this, but adversity is right around the corner. Failure, especially as you continue to go up, is right around the corner. It's coming. So it's better It's better to be prepared for it so you can eat it up, you know, and, and not just think that, oh, I'm good. You know, everything's going good now. No, know that failure, adversity, challenges, obstacles, they're going to come. It's not going to magically disappear, even if you're training your mind. But now you'll be able to eat it all up and use it all as fuel. Um, so long way. I know I kind of went off there, but um, all levels are great. I, I would say at the big league level, definitely less amount of players um, that are, you know, I feel like a lot of them are just kind of set in their their ways, but more so the rookies, um, but a lot of buy-in at the college and high school and youth levels. Love that. It's, I, I think it's funny that you referenced that only in, in so much as where I've watched just, you, you see the lens through a lot of different things. I was a longtime lacrosse coach, but to watch the lens of your own kid I wonder if that, and maybe you could speak to this at the at the high school level. I think kids are able. Bryce and JD being uh, two guys that could look around, you know, that have the potential to look around and say, "I'm better than that guy. I'm better than that guy," and that allows you to have this mindset when uh, of I don't need to change, as opposed to, you know, when you get to college. I think you look around and you say, "Oh man, we're all as good at best." You know, <laughs> like you're kind of now in a room of men who all aspire. And at, at the at the level you're sitting in, and it's funny, I actually know I have a relative who played with you in uh, those UVA years. We'll get to that off there. Um, but uh, it's you think that there that, that open mindedness comes because you're playing with more elite competition uh, or uh, maturation, um, and maybe Bryce and JD, if you could speak to JD, your story is a little wild with seven, but that is probably why you are going to the perfect school and will keep us safe for the next hundred years. Uh, um, so, but maybe Bryce. You, you, um, and you're doing it right now. You're with the elite of the elite. So I guess maybe let me ask you that, JD, as it relates to this work you're doing, you go to a school where kids don't aspire to go to college. They aspire to play professionally. That's what they're and in many ways. The school is almost helping try to make that a reality. And so you're sitting in a room that when you have a bad game, uh, the kid that's behind you on the depth chart is probably going to a division one college, right? And so how is this mindset working with you um, with that competitive nature that you've put yourself in? Uh, and do you think it'll help you as you go to an, an academy known for people who are the best? Absolutely. Um, from day one at IMG, I was around um, giants in this uh, amateur game. Guys like James Wood, Tommy White, Elijah Green. Like those are the guys I'm competing against. And um, I come from a really small town and maybe I was something there. But when I got here, I realized I ain't done nothing in this game yet. And so um, I realized I got to find an edge. I have to find ways that I can just keep getting better. Um, and then it's also like Bryce talked about earlier and Brandon talked about controlling the controllable. Again, I'm not going to have Elijah Green's sub six speed. Yes, he has a five nine nine on record at IMG. Pretty crazy. Hmm. Um, or James is James Woods six seven. I'm an undersized ball player, five eight one seventy five. But I compete, and I'm going to get the most out of my body physically that I can, and mentally, I'm going to, you know, I feel I'm on my way. But I know, like Brandon said, I can always keep getting better. And going to the academy, being around even better human beings which I think it's amazing how Brandon's program is so different from others. His, the first principle in his program talks about winning the ultimate game of life, being a decent human being first. If you can start mastering that, everything starts falling into place. So that's a little bit of a longer answer, but from day one, I've had to compete against guys bigger than me um, physically and also just in the game in general. And it's made me better and has set me up perfectly to go to a place where I want to be around some great human beings. It's awesome. Uh, Bryce, uh, let's, let's take that question, but talk specifically to the fact now that like, not to yourself, you're going to have to prove something physically. Right. And now to your coaches, to everybody. Right. I mean, like, uh, and, and so 
how does this how does how does this stuff that you're starting to dip your toes into and, and getting into how do you think this gives you does it give you an edge in in physical therapy and how do you think it's like uh how, how do you how do you think it may be something that you can look to as you go through the next whatever weeks they're saying to you but let's let's call let's call it a couple yeah um well, the, the main thing I see in this is just it's a real test uh, for myself physically and mentally. You know, um, I remember maybe seventh grade going to my first like PBR event. And I remember seeing a kid two years older, me, older than me hit the ball 100 miles an hour. And I was like, whoa. And that's when I learned, you know, I got to get stronger. I got to get bigger. And now that I've gotten to that point, um, it's just been about maintaining. It. And then sometimes you get you get thrown a roadblock like an ACL tear and you got to get surgery and things like that. So, you know, at first it's like, dang, like I really got to build it up. But now that I'm sitting here post-op, um, I'm really just, it's like looking up a big hill and just saying, bring it on. And it's really a testimony to myself. Can I, can I do it again? Can I build myself back? And do I have the mental fortitude to do that and sit on the sideline and still support my friends and, and work on myself at the same time? Awesome. Brandon, if, I, you got if, I can, it. if I can uh talk about that real quick Love yeah to. that cool um yeah so when I found out about Bryce I I texted him a exact combo I had with Tommy Roldan first year at UVA who tore his ACL I don't know six seven months ago um and Tommy came through the program worked with him a little one-on-one and when I first texted Tommy just checking in you know telling him you know I feel for you man I know you'll come back stronger what was the first thing he said Ohms, O M M S, which is on this wristband that I hand out right here. Ohms, obstacles make me stronger. Mm. At the end of the day, I won't say the word, stuff's coming our way. <laughs> no matter how good of a person we are, no matter how well and how disciplined we are, no matter how we are going about our life in just like a, a way that we know is an in integrity with the best version of ourselves. It, it the war, the universe doesn't care and as um you know admiral william h mcraven in his great book make your bed <laughs> calls it a sugar cookie he said sometimes and basically a sugar cookie in in the military is sometimes a lieutenant just tells you you go in the water roll around in the sand and you're just sandy all day sometimes it's just because and he said one day he had to do that in his great book make your bed um, which make your bed is the very first habit I have every player do um, that comes through the program. Everything first thing in the morning, um, no longer chat with that. But in that book, he calls it a sugar cookie. He says, you can be doing everything right. And he was, but sometimes the world's not fair and it doesn't care. So now when that stuff happens, comes back to what they, Bryce and JD have talked about, what I call the number one skill for all athletes, not just good, but arate, but excellent with controlling the controllables. It's simple in theory. It's harder in practice, especially when things like this happen. And I know Tommy, and I really believe Bryce is going to attack it and, and perceive it as, thank you, universe. You're giving me an obstacle that I know is going to make me stronger. That doesn't mean you're smiling and you're happy that it happened. It doesn't mean you're not frustrated. Of course, it's frustrating. You want to get out there. You want to compete at a very high level, right? But if we can step back and reflect and look at this challenge that the universe is presenting us with and really just attack it every day, day one style. How can I get just a little bit better today? Maybe this is a moment I can train my mind even more. Maybe I can build different functional muscles in my body as I'm recovering from this. Um, something that stands out is an article that came out about Spencer Strider when he had Tommy John surgery, either his last year at Clemson or right when he got drafted by the Braves. He said when he had that Tommy John surgery, right after that, he's like, I'm all in on the mental side. He had never really trained it, didn't think he needed to. And now he's like, that Tommy John surgery, it's the best thing that happened to me because I am a totally different pitcher now because now he's mastered the mental side as well. Whereas if he didn't have the Tommy John, who knows if he would have um, done that. Um, so knowing Bryce, I, I know he's going to attack it that way. Are there going to be rough days? Yeah, he's a human being. Any, no matter your injury or not, we're all going to have those days. But as I tell him, as I've told everybody, your highs will be higher and your lows will be higher on and off the field. If you have this mindset and know that it doesn't mean something's wrong with you, they call it common humanity. Kristen Neff, um, the leader in the study of science, self-compassion, she calls it common humanity. 
Just because you're going through tough times or you have anxiety or fear doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It simply means you're a human being. Now, when that stuff happens, do you have the mindset and the tools to use in the moment to close the gap and to stop the spiral? Um, once again, I'm going off here. I love talking about this stuff, but I know deep down Bryce is going to attack it and, and without a doubt, come back stronger than he's ever been mentally and physically. No doubt. Uh, and, and go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to say, I want to get practical for a second. I want, I want those who are listening, those who will listen to leave with a few tools including sign up for your course at some point in time, right? So you've got the wristband. I see you jump into a cold ice bath most every single day, kind of embracing the suck of that, right? Um, I just wonder kind of the practical things that you do every day wearing the wristband. What are they that help you continue to train every day? And JD and Bryce, you must have them at this point in time too, right? What are the things that you do every day independent of anybody else that help you continue to work on this muscle, the six tool? Mm, great question. So really what it, what it comes down to, and I think JD and, um, and Bryce would agree to really simplify everything that I try to do. It basically is be mindful, be aware when that worst self of you is trying to take over. Because we have the best and we have the worst battling inside of us all day, every day. So just being mindful, not bashing yourself, not being shameful, not getting, you know, overwhelmed when that worst self is taken over, that spiral starting, the gap is widening. I've mentioned that a couple of times, being who, being who you're capable of being, who you can be at any given moment and who you're actually being. If you feel that gap is wide, then it goes back to Jeff, your question. Use a tool in the moment, not minutes later, not next inning, not an hour from now, in that moment. Can you have the reactive discipline to step in between a stimulus and your response and widen that gap, Victor Frankl style, and respond like that best version of you? Once again, you, you're not going to be perfect, not going to ever be perfect. But if we can be more and more consistent and then close that gap, because when that gap is wide and we're not using our tools, first, we don't have them or we forget to use them. Well, in this gap is regret, is is fear is um, disillusionment, is poor performance, is men our mental health concerns, because we are we have the potential to be this at any given moment, but we're actually being this. So then let's use our tools. And what's the number one tool of the Major League Mindset Program, even though it might be tied with another one? The number one tool, actually have focal point stickers. Oh, yeah, bro, uh, okay, well, I was going to ask these guys if they remembered it, but it's, but the, that's good. it's the big league breath. Big Your league. breath. So I have these focal point stickers, like, I have them put them, you know, on their bat, or yeah. I actually have one on my phone here. So I look at it all the time. Basically, what is it? Because we can train this stuff all the time. A lot of players forget to use these tools in the moment because they are overwhelmed or they just simply forget to. And so having these cues, having these triggers, having these prompts and these reminders to do it. Um, so I would say the number one tool your breath and utilizing your breath the correct way is an absolute game changer. I believe gratitude in the moment can be very powerful to change your mental state because when we change our state, state we change our fate. So any given moment when that, that connection is lost between our best version of ourselves and the gap is wide and that we're spiraling out of control, the breath is powerful. Um, JD mentioned the flip the switch routine where you know who you are at your absolute best, then it's all about flipping the switch, creating confidence in the moment and having their own set flip the switch routine. So for me, I, I have a big tattoo on my back uh, of a lion. I, I call it best and worst self animal. When I was playing, I like to flip the switch into a hungry lion. And to me, what does that mean? It means bring it on, bring it all on. I, I, I trained for this. I'm ready. Yeah, I might be going out of my comfort zone, whether it's the, the cold tub where my inside worst self is saying, don't do it, you know, don't get in. I never do want to get in it. But then I look at my wristband and I say, bring it on, bring it on. And, and those three words right there, Jeff and everyone, science, it's not just me saying this. This is scientifically proven to change at a physiological level and, and obviously psychologically how you respond to fear or approaching adversity bring it on changes the game because it brings you this challenge 
you know, kind of response rather than a threat response. So we give tight and tense and avoidance to free and loose and approaching. And when we can do that, changes a lot. Um, so I could go on and on with the tools. I would say the breath, I would say, bring it on, uh, flip the switch, flush it routine to quickly bounce back when adversity happens. Have a, you could find me in the outfield when I played, I act like I was flushing a toilet. I basically learn from it and flush away that negativity. So I could be get back with that pitch one mindset, the next pitch. Um, I'll stop right there. I don't know if JD or Bryce wanted to talk about their tool, but, um, I yeah. want to hear their tools. It's all about tools. It's all about having tools and you yeah. remembering to use them on and off the field when that gap is widening. Let's say it's a it's a Friday night at your house. You don't have a you're not talking to a team tonight. You put your kids to bed and your wife comes in and says, I want to watch a rom com. Like what, yeah. what are your tools for that? Is it the bring it on kind of thing right there? I mean, how do you, you know she knows better? <laughs> no. Um, so if she were to ask the thing is, I, I you know, I, I, I approach sleep like it's a sport. Yeah. I, I like to think a great day tomorrow started the night before. So I, I'm very routinized. I'm very set in my ways, but obviously I adapt. If, you know, connection and presence is yeah. huge for me. So when I'm done my work day, this phone goes in the counter in the drawer where I cannot see it. Because one of the best ways to create a new habit is make the trigger, the prompt, the cue invisible. So I put this out of sight, out of mind, so I can be present and connected with family. Uh, but to answer your question, um, you know, she doesn't ever really ask that because she knows I'm probably <laughs> going to be in bed around nine, nine thirty. Um, but I definitely do prioritize. And this is a whole nother subject where we have these identities on and off the field, or I like to think energy, work, and love. So identity. I try to live in integrity with that identity in the different facets of my life. Um, so in that facet, I like to have the identity of someone who is a loving soul, who is loving, who is connected, who is kind. Um, so I know I'm going off here once again, Jeff, but if she okay. were to ask me that, I would most likely take a glance down at my Arate tattoo and try to respond like that best version of me. Do I do it all the time? And do I do it when the kids are crazy all the time? No. But when I don't, I try to go back to the moment where I could have responded a little bit better. So the next time I'm a little bit better um, with it. But yeah. Love it. Uh, all right, uh, Bryce, I'm going to come to you first. Right now, what are the cues that you use? What are the tools that you use when you need to, when you, when, when, when you realize you're in the batter's box and you're feeling something you shouldn't be feeling? What, what are the things that, the tools that you've found work for you? Yeah, for, so uh, one thing I learned from Brandon's class, actually, is just calling a timeout, taking a step out of the box, and just finding, like, a speck or, like, a little scratch on my bat and kind of just focusing in on that and then taking a deep breath uh, through the nose. And it's something that really just relaxes me and kind of lets me see retrospect. You know, say it's an 0-2 count, you know, at that point, right after that second strike, you're kind of like, damn, you know? And then uh, take a second and you just get out of there or get out of that bat and batter's box for a second, kind of reevaluate yourself. You're going in there. You're like, okay, now odds are against me. I'm going to do something. I'm going to surprise this pitch. I'm going to make a play, you know? Um, so it's for me, it's mainly the breath, but another, another tool, which I also learned from Brandon is kind of, it's kind of this idea of comparing yourself to an animal You're comparing your best, the best version of yourself to an animal. For me, it was a honey badger at, at that time, but now I kind of like to use a lion just because it's more of a beastly thing. And you kind of get that feeling like when you're listening to your favorite pump up song, it kind of just gets you amped up. And if I can get that feeling when I'm stepping into the box, like I'm super confident and that's, and I feel just like a lion getting in there, like a competitor, like I'm about to bite someone's head off. If I can get in that mode, um, that at bat or before that play, if I'm in the outfield is, is going to have a better outcome than if I did it. The honey and Bryce, what I what I love about that, um, I, I think everyone would agree that the, the 10 to 15 seconds in between every pitch are more important than the pitch itself. And I love the quote Derek Jeter has is of the last he says, the last thing you think is the first thing you do. So like like Bryce is talking about right there, stepping out, taking control of your thoughts, of your focus, focusing on what you want to have happen, not on what you want to avoid or not on what you don't want to happen. You so when we do that and we have this set rock solid pre-pitch routine that we do every single pitch and it's just locked in and it's on autopilot 
then you're putting yourself in the best position to succeed. And it doesn't guarantee anything, but that best self animal works for a lot of people. A lot of UVA guys actually last thought, they say, I'm him. We, you probably hear people say, oh, Shohei Otani, he's him. They like to say that, especially as they're walking to the box, I'm him. And they're like, it just kind of changes my body language. It changes me into that that, you know, kind of beastly thing like Bryce was talking about, where you just, you're priming your mind with confidence. Because if we don't let do that, then our mind takes over and we're wired to think negatively, especially in moments out of our comfort zone. So um, love that Bryce pre-pitch routine is, is everything. Love that. JD, talk to us a little bit about your, your cues, your tools. Um, well, in the box, in the moment, very similar to what Bryce said, it's the breath. It's finding that focal point. Uh, for some people, it can be looking to a foul pole. For me, it's the number on my bat um, or a focal point sticker. Brandon has some pretty cool ones. Um, and then, like you said, last thing you think is the first thing you do. So uh, Brandon talks about the pre-pitch routine, and he uses the kiss metaphor, uh, keep it simple stud. Hmm. Um, and the last thing I'm thinking, I take my breath, and it's probably either one of three things um bring it on let's go compete um maybe if it's an approach thing um kind of as i've gotten older like it's it's just modified you can ask brandon a little bit like i used to say um hard middle or hard right center like different mechanical things maybe but i don't want to get too into that especially for me it's best when it's just a simple neutral thought that relates directly to competing hmm. that gets like, especially with two strikes. That's when I really shift to compete. doesn't yeah. matter now, just compete. Um, bring it on is a great one too. It's on the focal point sticker. Um, and so in that moment, that's the biggest tool is that pre-pitch routine where you're just keeping it simple. Yeah. Um, and another great quote is, uh, let's see, don't listen to yourself, talk to yourself. Um, when, when you sort of, when you're quiet, those voices in your head start to, the doubt starts to build up, starts to creep in. Like, man, he's got a nasty, you know, nasty curveball. Oh, two, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to, no, bring it on, compete. Throw me that hook. Throw me that fastball. Try and get it by me. Like the moments when I'm at my best, my self-talk is so good. And maybe it's not always there, but the correlation is certainly there. Dude, JD, if I could hit on that real quick, um, you're talking about speaking out loud and dude, I love everything you're talking about. A couple of things. It's never set in stone and, and everyone, what one pre-pitch routine would work for somebody might not work for the other person. And a big thing I talk about with teams and individuals, there's no the way I'll try to give you all the information and through trial and error, you find your way. There's no one way to do this. Um, and then with the self-talk kind of talk, listen to yourself less, talk to yourself more. Um, Nick Parker, if anyone watched him, UVA's Friday night guy in the first game of the World Series last year against Florida, you could see him before every pitch talking out loud. So what was he doing? What JD said, taking it to another level. And what was his say? What was he saying? What was his pre-pitch routine? Get ahead, be aggressive, stay sideways. And he said he learned stay sideways from um, Russell Wilson in one of Trevor Moab's book. Um, so we can't be thinking of anything else, especially if you're saying it out loud. So Nick Parker, when he was pitching, you could see him saying, get ahead, be aggressive, stay sideways. That's all he was doing. Um, so it's just kind of pre-pitch routine to a whole nother level and taking really good control of that self-talk. I love that. It's a only because I want to respect everybody's time. Greg, we got time for maybe one more question. You got a good one that you want to ask these guys kind of on the way out? I mean, if you've got one, mine, mine's probably not a quick answer, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess, uh, no, I, I, for, for once, I don't think I do. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm at a loss just because I have so many more things to ask Brandon. Um, yeah, 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 well, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange that at other times. Hey, yeah. Bryce and JD, um, how you guys doing? I just like to know kind of how you're doing individually. I know you're both going through some things right now. You don't have to go through it, all the details, but are you are you doing well? You doing okay? Yeah, my heart's good. Uh, school's wrapping up, ready for Thanksgiving. Uh, should be fun to just get out in the blind and go do some hunting. Yeah, I love that. Bryce? Um, you know, I'm actually doing a lot better than I was a week ago. I'm starting to be a little more mobile, um, not taking pain medicine anymore and 
you know, not spending my whole day on a couch. So, you know, I'm very appreciative to move around and uh, it seems just, seems like everything's just getting better from here. So. Good. Good. Fellas in the spirit of the season, given that it's gratitude, um, you know, be, be, be grateful. You've got someone like, uh, like Brent, like Brandon in your life at the time you have them in your lives. So That's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty young. I'm 50. Didn't have that, uh, uh a huge fan of it. And, and in my own way, do my own thing with that in, in the world of happiness. But it's really neat that, uh, uh, that you're doing this young man for these even younger men. And you should feel really awesome about providing them the tools to be successful because you're not providing them tools to be successful in baseball. Yeah, uh, you're outlining how to be a, a really successful human being uh, and a good person. And so that's awesome. It's awesome. So, boys, hope you hope you realize. I, I know I, I get the sense. I know you, Bryce, but I get the sense, J.D., and briefly knowing you that you both understand the power of gratitude and appreciate uh, Mr. Geyer. So awesome, fellas. Glad I was part of this. It, it goes, Jeff, said. Jeff, it goes both ways, like. Having, you know, talk about gratitude, getting to work with players like this who are bought in and who are all in because, you know, there's players that are kind of going through the motions, but the, these two, they grow through the motions. They put the work in because you can get all the theory and knowledge in the world and all the wisdom, but it's just useless if you don't take action every single day. Um, so to have players like that, it, it's why I do what I do. Um, so love them and, and just great kids, um, great people. Um, and that's why they're going to be successful no matter what they do in life. Um, so thank you guys. And also Jeff, thanks for putting this together. Um, would love to do it again at some point without a doubt. Tell people that I believe this to be true. And I, you know, I try to be careful about where I say it, but this is my show. So I get to say it here. Um, I think we're on the planet to serve one another. I think we're equipped with certain gifts. Each of us have unique gifts and it is the fortunate few who find those gifts and learn how to share them for the betterment of our community. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here, right? Um, we're trying to give you, Brandon, a platform for sh to share how you're uniquely wired. You, uh, you have tremendous giftedness, right? Everybody would, um, everybody, uh, wants to live the life of the major everybody who's in this game wants to live the life of the major leaguer and yet while i know you loved where your feet were at those moments i also sense that you found a purpose here and and i love that and look guys you know that jd and bryce that and cooper would have known this greg um like I'm here to help each of you find your unique path in life and i had a I had a parent say to me the other day Jeff, what are the what are the couple of little things that we need to do to get beyond where we are right now? We're at we're training all day long. We're in the weight room all day long. We're studying all day long. Well, reality is so is your competition. So let's go figure out how to change your mind so that you can separate yourselves from the others. And even if you don't, just become the best version of yourself. So I love this conversation. I would love to do this again. JD and Bryce, I am so proud of you guys and uh, just honored to be involved in your lives. So thank you for that opportunity. So you guys all have a great night. Let's uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving next week and let me know if I can ever do anything for you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Happy yeah. holidays, everybody. Happy yeah. holidays. Sure. Bye -bye. So, yeah. Thanks all. H3 Conversations is brought to you by Major League Mindset, results on and off the field, and by Jeff Burton Consulting, charting your path to a successful outcome, and by Crozet Sports, family, community, and sports.